Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs at night and we do crime and crafting on Saturday nights. Uh, so if you like true crime stories, if you like playing detective for a little bit, and if you like crafting, then make sure you like and make sure you subscribe. Um, before I get into today's crime and crafting video, one, we are going to be making coasters. If you do follow me on Instagram or Facebook, if I am intentionally making something, then I will post what I'm using beforehand. So make sure to follow me. Those are down in the description box. Secondly, I want to clarify some things about crime and crafting, which I don't think I've made clear. I have read numerous comments saying that I need to research more so that it flows a little better, that, um, uh, that you guys can't see my face or you can't see the craft or I, I just feel like there's a lot of confusion out there because I want to make clear, I never intended for crime and crafting to be like podcast kind of version. I don't like that. Like I don't want to throw birth dates at you and where they grew up and what street that was and what their Zodiac sign is. And I, that's, that's not how I want crime and crafting to be crime and crafting for me is I envision it like y'all are knocking on my door in the morning and you're coming in my home. We're going to go sit and we're going to have our morning coffee and we are going to be spilling the tea about the snapped episode that we just saw last night. That's how I want it to be. I want it to be like, I'm having this conversation with y'all. I don't want to talk at you. I don't want to just talk at my screen spilling out all these facts. Do I research? I research for over a week on these cases that I do. And that is exactly why I am just filming this on Friday because I wanted to wait to get as much information as I could about this case since it's ongoing. So I do my research and yes, I do have notes and things like that, but I want this to be a conversation. I don't want this to be a fact story, although I do have facts and I try to give you as much accurate information as possible. So you guys, with that said, um, I filmed this previously and my phone ran out of storage and then it didn't save it. So I'm literally recording this all over again. So uh, lucky for you, I messed up on one of my coasters. So I kind of have to start over again. So. We're gonna be talking, we're really going to kind of be playing detective in this case here because one, I want to make clear, this is an ongoing case of Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie. Gabby is still considered a missing person. So eyes and ears open y'all, because if this video just reaches one person that has seen Gabby, then that's going to mean everything to her family and her friends and the community that has been supporting her and looking for her since she went missing. So again, this is recent, like just reported last weekend. Okay, so missing persons case. This is actively going on right now. So I'm gonna kind of break it into sections. I'm gonna give you a background. I am going to then tell you the dates. So we're gonna go over the timeline. Then we are going to go over what's currently happening right now, okay? And then I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of get into her social media accounts. And so this is gonna be a long one. So if you, if you have a glass of wine, if you're crafting alongside with me, if you are just chilling in your cozies, Okay, just be prepared because we're going to be here for a while. There's a lot of stuff to cover. Okay, so we are talking about Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie. This is Gabby is from New York and um, she is 22 years old and Laundrie is 23. Now they met in high school and they have been dating for about one and a half, two years now and they reside in Florida with um, Brian's parents. So they have been living there. They did get engaged. However, they did not get married because of COVID. So instead of, you know, having this wedding, they decided that they were going to, of course I got something in here. They decided that they were going to get their, um, 
their Ford Transit van and fix it up because they wanted to experience the van life, which you'll see hashtag all over their social media. So they got their uh, van, which is registered in Gabby's name. Remember that. And they decided to fix this up. So this van is equipped with, you know, a refrigerator, a bed, everything that you would need to, you know, uh, travel around uh, the world if you wanted to. And they document everything. And I think you guys, I want to stress how important it is in this case that they literally document everything, okay? Um, they are super into social media and Gabby takes these uh, beautiful pictures and editing and I mean, they are gorgeous. We're going to get into that. But so they decide now I have read different things that their trip actually started in June, but I could be wrong. There is so much social media attention on this, you guys, that, you know, it's really hard to get facts, but the police have been very active on, um, like in the news, on Twitter, everything. So hopefully I'm getting everything pr pretty on the nailing it on the head. You know, you, you picking up what I'm putting down. Um, so they started their journey. They did travel to New York because Gabby's brother was graduating school. So she wanted to see that. This was July 2nd. July 2nd is going to be the last time that Gabby's mother sees her. So they start traveling again. They're leaving New York at this time. Now they go into, um, they travel and again, they're documenting all of this. Everywhere they go, there is basically a picture tagging where they've been and then so forth. So I got my notes right here because I'm trying to be on track, okay? So they go into Kansas, then in still in July, they travel into Colorado, and then they wind up in Utah. This is also in July. Now, we get to August 12th. They are in Moab County, Utah. <laughs> and they, a, oh man, they're in Moab County, Utah. Now, they are at a store called the Moonflower. And remember this later because I'm going to touch on something else. And a gentleman, a bystander, calls the police and tells the police that they think there is a uh, domestic violence situation occurring. And so the police are called. The police do catch up with Brian and Gabby in their vehicle and they do pull them over. Now, I am going to share like any links. I am going to be reading from here and at some points kind of screen sharing, but I want to read these to you, okay? So, the police pull over the car and I am going to, so it said, after I sat Gary out, so again, this is August 12th. Um, I asked Brian to step out of the vehicle to speak with him. He told me they suffer from blank and although her blank is more advanced than his, issues between the two had been building over the last few days. Now there is body cam footage and I will um, place that after I read these for you because you can hear it in your own words. But she she says OCD is what Gabby states. So I don't know if that's what he suffers from as well. And then he said issues between the two had been building over the last few days. This in turn caused him to argue more than usual. Brian told me neither he nor Gabrielle take medication for their blank. Brian explained he and Gabrielle have been traveling together for the last four or five months. The time spent created emotional strain um, between them and increased the number of arguments. While arguing near Main Street, he had attempted to separate from her so they could both calm their emotions. He got into their van and Gabrielle had gone into a manic state. Brian said Gabrielle, thinking he was going to leave her in Moab, without a ride, went to slap him. As Gabrielle started to swing, 
Brian pushed her away to avoid the slap. As a result, Gabrielle off balance, but still caught Brian's face with some fingers, causing some minor visible scratches, um, yada, yada. At, after evaluating the total totality of the circumstances, I do not believe the situation escalated to the level of domestic assault as much as that of mental health crisis. So then you will see in the video, he gives Gabby the keys to her van and then he, they physically take Brian to a safe haven hotel where he could stay overnight. They both have their cell phones in case of emergencies. Now, it says around 1900 hours, I went to blank where witness Christopher blank lived and had him fill out a statement form. Christopher told me that he was not entirely sure what it is he had seen, but feared the worst, which is why he came forward as a witness and agreed to complete a written statement. So right there, I mean, for somebody as a bystander, I mean, if you see somebody like arguing and stuff like a couple, I mean, do you call the police right away? Are you like, okay, that's a couple arguing? I feel like you would have had to see something kind of intense to feel, to, to feel the need to call the police officers on this. So then I'm going to, let me, let me blow up my screen here. And now this is saying that when they approached the van, Gabrielle was in the passenger seat, was crying uncontrollably. I asked Gabrielle to get out of the vehicle to speak with me. Gabrielle told me that she suffers from blank with blank. She continued because of her blank and blank combined with little arguments she and Brian had been having that day. She was struggling with her mental health, which led to the incident that was reported to law enforcement. Gabrielle stated that when she saw my light, she hit Brian. The car swerved. Um, at no point in my investigation did Gabrielle stop crying, breathing heavily, or compose a sentence without needing to wipe away tears, wipe her nose, or rub her knees with her hands. So you guys, I am going to insert um, the footage right here. So I will take a break. Uh, you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Mm -hmm. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer. Think very hard. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. <laughs> Some personal issues. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping got supplies and stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hit the, the, the bump there. <laughs> I was distracting him from driving. I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, man? Yeah. Just hang tight right there. Um, do you mind if I take your keys and just put them on your hood? Yeah, buddy. I'm so Thank sorry. You. Oh, no, you're fine. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were, no. you, what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was, what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling him to him. It doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. I am separating the two of you tonight. Okay. I want you guys both to be tonight away from each other. Relax. Breathe. I because there's no reason to be crying now, okay? This is I understand that this can feel like it's a nightmare, but you're coming out as the golden flower on top of the okay? okay, you guys. So now that you've seen that, you've seen I couldn't imagine now, again, you guys, she is miss, she is a missing person. So this isn't, she's, you know, this isn't considered a homicide or anything like that. Gabby is missing right now. And I just, I mean, my heart hurts because if her parents, which I know her, her biological father said that, um, he did not watch it because it's not, it's not helping him bring her home, you know, because I'm like, as a parent, if you did watch it, just knowing your daughter was hurting like that and was so emotional, it'd break your heart. It would break your heart. You know, it would. I remember growing up when I cried, my mom cried. Like I, I just, I couldn't imagine that. So that was August 12th. Okay. Now on August 24th, 
she is seen. Now, I've read uh, a lot of it just says she was seen checking out of a hotel in Salt Lake City, Utah, where she stayed a couple days. But then I read an article where it says that both of them checked out of the hotel. And a lot of this, you guys, when we go into the social media, you'll see. So that was August 24th. Damn, we're going to do dates first and then, we, then we're going to get into the nitty gritty, okay? So then um, her dad said the last time he talked to her, actually heard her voice was August 21st. And that's also a reason he said he did not feel the need to watch that body cam video because he knows as of August 21st that he was talking to his daughter. Then on August, now the mom says either August 24th or 25th, which I don't know if she has to keep those dates like private or anything because she said that she did call um, and speak to her. But then I'm like, you could track the date on your, your phone and stuff. So I'm unsure why she's unsure of the date unless that's something that they need to keep to themselves right now. Um, so... Um, August, we're, we're going to say 25th is when the mom is, uh, said to have last heard from Gabby. Okay. Then August 30th, her mom receives a text from Gabby. Now, what, what am I doing? It's unclear because I could have sworn when this for, when I first got a hold and found out about this case. I could have sworn the mom had said that the text had basically said that there wasn't any service, but maybe I'm getting that confused with the phone call because now they aren't releasing what the the actual like text message said on August 30th. However, well, I'll get into that. So that was August 30th. Her mom last, she gets the text, okay? Now... From August 30th, the mom, okay, so August 30th, now it's September 11th, and the mom has not heard from Gabby at all, and she's like, okay, now this is getting weird, there's no way she could be off the grid for this long and have not communicated with me, something's got to be going on. You guys, this is September 11th of this year. This was last weekend, okay? So her mom calls the police, reports Gabby missing. So, y'all, the same night, the same night she reports Gabby missing, they go over to uh, the laundry residence. So remember, um, Brian, and Gabby live with his parents. They find, do you know what they find? Do you know what they find? If you're following this, you know what they find. They find Gabby's van in the driveway, in the driveway of Brian's house. They knock, 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 knock on the door. The parents come to the door and they hand the police officers their attorney's contact information. Okay, you guys, they hand them in attorney's information. They don't know they're coming. They did not know that they were coming. So <clears throat> that was September 11th. Now you guys get this, get this. There's another date here, okay? September 1st. Yes, I'm backtracking a little bit, but September 1st is when Brian came home and Gabby is not with him. So he drove Gabby's, Gabby's, Gabby's van home to his residence, not even his, his mommy and his daddy's residence. And Gabby is not with him. And keep in mind, September 1st, she's reported missing September 11th. He, up until this point, he already lawyers up. 
why would somebody get a lawyer if they didn't do anything wrong? Why? I, mm, okay. So you guys, those are the dates. Those are all the dates. You guys, this is all over social media. I, like I said, I'm going to link. I have maps. I have everything of their timeline. Okay. Now they, uh, so now I'm going to talk about what's currently going on here. So Brian to this day will not talk, will not say anything. He has, like I said, he lawyered up right when the cops came to his door. He already had contact information for a lawyer for them to reach. Now, this is Gabby's fiance, you guys. This is Gabby's fiance, the man that was going to marry her, that was going to spend the rest of his life with her. And he is not talking to anybody. You would think he'd be the first one to make missing persons flyers and go out there looking night and day and have a flashlight and be out somewhere wherever she is trying to look for her. But no, he is in mommy and daddy's home, comfortable, just hanging out, just using an attorney. And he will not give anybody any information. You guys, Gabby's parents, uh, her mom and her stepdad, and then her dad and her stepmom have like pleaded, pleaded with the family over like social media. They had tried, um, you know, texting them. They, I mean, even um, the Petito's lawyer, they have even, you know, express like, please, like, let us know what's going on. Like, we need to know. You guys are the only people that know what's going on. Even police officers have gone to social media, have gone on like Twitter, have talked to the, you know, the news. I mean, all of these people are asking like, please just talk, just come forward. They've even pleaded to you know, Brian's parents, like as parents, you have to understand what we're going through. What if it was, you know, Brian in this situation? What if Brian had disappeared? Wouldn't you want to know where he is? What's happening to him? You would want to know those things. And you guys are just idly standing by being quiet and allowing your lawyer to, well, I mean, not even the lawyer is talking um, and they're saying, well, he's not going to say anything because uh, in his, or, um, whatever you say can be held against you in the court of law. Sorry, I'm mumbling that up because I'm thinking so many dang things in my mind right now. Okay, so he's not talking. Parents are pleading. They're like, please just let us know. We don't like we do not care. We just want to know where she is. Please let us know. And the guy is, he's silent. And I think for me, I, I'm getting frustrated because, you know, a lot of these cases um, that I have been talking about have been, you know, past tense, a couple of them. And so I'm kind of like, well, why can't they arrest him? Why can't they take him in for something? And they keep explaining that he has his Fifth Amendment rights and that this is considered a missing persons case. So he's exercising that right. But I think for me, I'm like, okay, where are the phone records? Like they use social media all the time. Why are we pinging stuff? Which I know they are. The everybody, even the FBI is on this case. They are actively searching and looking. I'm just like, I need the information. Like, I want to know, like, where's the last place? Like her phone pinged, where is her phone? Like, we all have so many questions. Her parents have so many questions. I'm like talking a mile a minute because I'm just so whew, beyond, like, just blown away at this man's disregard for somebody he's supposed to love, for his parents' disregard, for 
her parents and for Gabby that lived with them for a year and a half, two years, that was going to be their daughter-in-law. It just, it makes you so sick. So I was thinking, I was like, why can't they get him on, um, like Grand Theft Auto? You know what I'm saying? Because the van was registered in Gabby's name. So I'm like, why can't they take him in for that? No? I'm, I kind of want a little heavy here. Um, because, right? Like, I, you would think that he would could be taken in for that because it wasn't his vehicle. So it could technically be considered stealing, which they did take the vehicle and they are combing through the vehicle. So, but we don't know anything regarding what they have found in the, if they've found anything at all. So again, you guys, you need to keep your eyes and your ears out, eyes and ears open, because this is ongoing. They still have not found Gabby. Now that is currently like what's going on, which isn't a lot because he's not talking. So, um, I'm just telling you what I know up until this point, but y'all, by the time this video posts tomorrow evening, may, there might be more that has come out because this is just, it, it's, it's blowing up. You guys, our friend is always visiting us, this fly. So now we're going to go over, well, you know what? I need to put this down first. We are going to go over their social media accounts. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to put, I'm going to explain it. And I'm also going to record my screen, which, oh my gosh, I think I'm still recording my screen. Oh no, I'm not. Okay. I am going to screen record what I am looking at. And then, um, I am going to talk you through this. Okay. Now, let me move the old one that I recorded earlier this morning. Okay. Yes, let's empty that. Okay, so we're going to go over the social media accounts because I feel like they really kind of let you live through, you know, Gabby's eyes, through Brian's eyes. And it's not, you know very often that you get that kind of opportunity with cases. So like I said, they documented their trip. They had even started um, a YouTube channel and it shows that like the first video that they posted was on, I think it was like August 18th. Again, I will link that. And if I can figure out how to link an Instagram, then I will link the uh, Gabby's Instagram as well. So now that I'm finishing this up, we're going to go ahead and then cut away. And you guys, you're going to get into this, dude, because it is just so, it's just so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Come on. I want, I'm, I want to get into this here and I'm over here finishing my coaster. These are bad a double s look at this okay so breaking away right here all right you guys so we're going to kind of play detective and let me tell you the group of people right now following this case and the people in the comments kind of doing their own detective work is absolutely amazing what these people are like looking into what they're finding out about it just like blows your mind okay let's go here let's go here okay so here we start this is kansas right here this first picture and we're gonna look at a couple things one the photography and the editing is absolutely stunning all right so you can tell right here these are things we need to pay attention to as we're looking into this. So one, she tags basically everywhere that they go or where they're at. A lot of her um, Instagram like 
like, you know, posts or descriptions are very simple. This at Bizarre Design is Brian, her fiance, and her hashtags are pretty minimal, okay? We're gonna look through all of these that from traveling. Then we have her in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And again, beautiful photography. Again, all of these pictures, these pictures are stunning. I She's the one editing. Um, this is Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. This is probably one of her longer ones, but other than that, like it's she doesn't really post long. And again, minimal hashtags, tags, Brian, AKA douche. And here we go again. She tags Great Sand Dunes, very small description, and then the hashtag van life travel. Still right here. This is July 11th, you guys. Great Sand Dunes National Park. Last day in Colorado. Then they're headed to Utah. Now we have July 16th. Zion National Park. We have brought a small piece of home to the canyons. And in this one, this is July 18th. On the YouTube video that they posted, she actually shows a bit of this, which that is so beautiful. All right, July 18th, they're at the Narrows Zion National Park. Look at this girl, so full of life and happy. We have July 21st. Again, she's always tagging where she's at. These are pretty minimal. This um, is probably one of her longer like hashtags. But again, she hashtags in her description. She doesn't hashtag in her comments box. Um, this is July 22nd. Then we go July 26th. And then July 30th is right here. This is Canyonlands National Park. This is a really long one. Okay, so then we have July 31st. Now you guys, July 31st, they're in Canyonlands. Um, and then we'll look right here from July 31st to August 12th, she goes silent. There's no post, which is pretty odd since she posts pretty consistently. And then her posts are written a bit differently than her previous ones. It's almost like somebody is writing this to paint you a very descriptive picture of where they are. So I'm going to read this one just because um, it's going to tie in in a little bit. So on a calm Monday morning at Bazaar and I decided to take the highly trafficked uh, hike to the Delicate Arch. Not sure if it's because it was 7 a.m. on a Monday, but there actually were not as many people on the trail as I expected. After waiting on a short line for someone to generously take our photo, at Bazaar and I made our way to the other side of Arch. We also camped for one night. Um, and then she, and then the post goes on and on. There's a lot of tags. There's a lot um, like hashtagging in the middle of this. Now, I don't know how to see what time things were posted on Instagram because I feel like that'll help us tie in because remember, August 12th is when they had their confrontation. This is when they got pulled over by the police, which I think was around 4 p.m., I want to say. So this is on the same day. And then they go on, she posts again on that same day. And again, very lengthy posts which is not like her. And then now her hashtags are in her comments instead of her description box, all right? So we have August 12th, then we got August 19th, and almost immediately after telling At Bazaar how happy it made me to see that people were truly respectful of the park, I watched some guy leave his processed pre-packaged plastic conglomerate of lunch garbage on the picnic table. This doesn't sound like her either because all of her other posts are so uplifting and positive and then now she's kind of talking down, I guess. So you guys, that was August 19th. Now we have August 25th. Now remember, she checked out of the hotel on the 24th. A lot of people are saying this post 
kind of throws them off because she's super dressed up, which she isn't in any of her other posts. But then some people are saying, well, if they stayed in a hotel, maybe they got a nice shower. She could actually curl her hair. They wanted to get nice. Maybe they went to lunch somewhere. I don't know. I do not know, but it is a little off. And then she doesn't tag anything. They don't tag where they're at. She puts happy Halloween, which I think is kind of odd because it's not even close to Halloween in this picture. I mean, if anything, maybe fall, the fly is weird. There's no hashtag. There's no like van life. There's no, I mean, there's no nothing like her usual posts. And then if you, she's so beautiful. And then if you go down, then there's this last picture and it's like not even the same outfit she's wearing. She's wearing a hat. She's wearing a tan shirt. It's almost like somebody was like going through pictures, trying to find some that they can just like upload, you know, and then not like tagging you guys. It, it's just weird. And this is the last post on July 3rd that Gabby puts on her social media. So like I said, they're documenting everything, everywhere they go. And then like these last ones just get super weird and not like her. And now, like I, you guys, I told you this was gonna be a lot of detective work, okay? So bear with me here. Let's go to, of course I'm clicking on every single one that he's not tagged in, right? Okay, so now we're at his Instagram. So I just want to, let's see, point out how lengthy, let's see if that doesn't even, barefoot hiking, like if you, hold on, we're going to, I think it's this. So like, remember the one where she's taking the picture and she's looking outside the van and she says something about the biodegradable. And then here's his, not a lot of biodegradable packaging for on the go food these days. That's why I stick with my melon rinds, apple cores, peach pits, and banana pills. Also, most melons contain around 90% water. Talk about hydr hydration. Let's keep plastic water bottles off the trail or better yet off the planet. And it just like his messages, his, the way that he writes, it sounds more like what was being said on Gabby's Instagram, the last like three posts. Then I want to point out, which somebody else, like I said, a lot of people are investigating this here. Now, I want you guys to notice this necklace that's in like every picture. Here's his necklace. I don't know what that sound is. He's wearing the necklace. You could see him, what looks like the necklace. And then August 13th, this is the day after they have the, the confrontation and get pulled over. Now the necklace is gone which is kind of weird because he's wearing it the entire time. So in the altercation, did it get like ripped off? Or I mean, where did his necklace all of a sudden go? And I want you to notice, now we know that Gabby's still around somewhere because she was seen checking out of a hotel on the 24th. However, these photos of him, they're not edited. I mean, you guys have seen all of his, like these, these are edited photos. Look at how clear and beautiful these photos are, right? I mean, every single one of them are stunning. And then you get to his last two posts and they're, they're not edited at all. I mean, like, look at that picture. It, and it, the angles that they're in, they almost look like it's almost like they're in selfie mode because you guys, they do have little remote controls that connect to your phone nowadays uh, that you can like press and they'll snap the photo for you. So there's this one and then there's this one right here. 
And again, look at his long pose and then his hashtags are in the comments. And again, with the photography, nothing's edited like it usually is. And this is August 13th, the day after. Okay. And then I'm going to point this out real quick because a lot of people called it out that like a lot of this stuff he draws is kind of disturbing, I guess you could say. There's also, um, sorry if that was fast, you guys. Um, okay, so we're going to step away from the social media. Now we're back. So, um, it was also said, and again, a lot of the facts that I told you, the dates and stuff, that is what like actu I actually like researched, came straight from police officers, things like that. Um, and then this stuff now is kind of, you know, theories, what other people are thinking, what I've been thinking, going through and combing through these things. Um, but somebody has also said, which I don't see it here in his Instagram, but that they were reading a book on a serial killer that basically traveled the country killing people. And there's a post, somebody references it. Now, you guys, I don't, I don't know why Siri is trying to record my voice. How scary. I'm just probably going to send that to him. Um, again, these are just kind of theories. These, these are not facts or anything like that. Maybe they're not even reading this book. I don't know. But so that this, they're reading this serial killer book. And then uh, he even, and sorry, I should have taken the screenshot of it because there was a screenshot where he posts something along the lines of like, I don't even want to take, put a bookmark in this, um, in this book, almost like he was, um, what, what do I want to say? Shoot. I lost my train of thought. What was I going to say about that? It's almost like he was, I can't find the word y'all. What am I looking for? Oh crap. It's not coming to me. He was, um, Y'all, I'm bad at this. I can't think of the word. Idolizing the book or like um, making it like something very important, I guess you could say. Now, it has been, it was brought to my attention actually because of this case of another case that they thought was connected. And that was the uh, newlywed couple, Kylan Schultz and Crystal Turner. Now, these two girls actually worked, well, one of them, Kylan, um, she actually worked at Moonflower, which is where Brian and Gabby had the confrontation. And uh, then on August 18th, both of those women were, um, were found murdered at their campsite. So it was brought to my attention and a lot of people thought that maybe the cases could be connected. Now I read before recording this again, that they have determined that the two cases are not connected in any way. Um, but I will get into that story, um, that case next week. Hopefully there will be some information out because right now it is very uh, hush hush and, and there's not, there's not much I can, you know, find fact wise on it. But either way, you guys, we are looking for Gabby Petito. All right. Like I said, her, I don't, he doesn't even deserve it. Her fiance still is not talking. At least this is Friday evening. He is still not talking to anybody. Gabby is still, like I said, considered missing. She could be out there wandering around. She could, you know, she's obviously in danger because her parents said that there is no way that she would go this long and not call them. So something is going on here. Okay. And we need to help her. So 
you guys, please, I'm going to leave, I'm going to put a picture up. If you guys see her, if you're in the Utah area, if you're in, you know, the Wyoming area where she was said to have been going next, if you are anywhere, if you saw more or anything little when they were having like the altercation or heard what they were saying or were camping next to them at their campsites, I mean, anything and everything is valid information. It's something, anything little that you can recall. If you live in those areas and you see somebody that looks like her, ask if they need help, if she needs help. I mean, keep your eyes and your ears open, y'all. Like I am so devastated for this family and it seriously, it infuriates me. And you know, the parents came out and, and the mom said, like, at this point, I'm getting angry. At first, they were just kind of, you know, like, I, I just want our daughter back. We want her back. We just want to know. Now it's to the point where they're getting angry. I'm getting angry and I'm not even the parents because that boy, we ain't calling him a man because he ain't a man. He, he don't got no, you know, you know, because he is sitting in his house not his house, remember mommy and daddy's house, all comfortable, has an attorney and won't say anything. And it's so heartbreaking because this is somebody, you, I'm not gonna cry, you're gonna cry, okay? I'm not gonna cry, calm yourself, calm your face, calm your eyes. This is somebody that you asked to marry you. This is somebody that you wanted to commit your life to forever, for the rest of your lives. This is somebody that you experienced all these wonderful journeys with and his parents too, for his parents, like she lived with you. His sister even spoke out and said, I haven't heard from him. I want to know where Gabby is just as much as anybody else. Like my kids love her. I love her. Like, she was family to them too. And for there to be just this cold lack of feelings, I, I mean, I don't know. And y'all like, obviously this, this is a missing person. And I hope that Gabby pops up somewhere in this world. I really do hope. But when it comes to him, why would he need a lawyer? That's like what I want to know. Why would you need a lawyer? Because, I mean, if you guys got into, let's say, an argument or something, even if she was like, F you, leave me alone. I'm staying. I don't care what you do with the band. Just take off. I don't want to see you anymore. This and that. Like, one, you still wouldn't leave her. You wouldn't. That's the love of your life. You're not going to leave her. There's no way in H-E double hockey sticks that you would leave her. There's no way. I mean, you. I, I'm pretty sure if it were you and your spouse and you guys got in the fight or something like that, like you wouldn't leave them at a bar. Like there, there's just no way. And then for you to come home on September 1st and not be with Gabby. So it's like at that point, the last time somebody has seen or talked to her was August 24th to the 25th. So those are like the for sure days. So that means it could be the first to, sorry. Yeah. So uh, August 25th, we'll say he drives home. He's home on September 1st. So already that's what six days or so. And then there's another 11 days that pass. And then her family is like, something's up. So that's already like 16 days that you've been without your fiance. And you've already gotten a lawyer. And she's missing. So I just don't get like, if something happened, like just man up. Do people not realize that in this world, I, I watch a lot of true crime. If you've done the crime, you're going to pay the time. They are going to find out. They are going to find out what happened. 
in this world now with technology, with like this, you know, footprint that everybody is leaving with their phones. Hello, Google tracks everything. You know that because after you watch this, Gabby Petito is going to start popping up on your feed everywhere. You know it. It, it's, I feel like impossible these days to get away with anything. So at some point, this fool is going to have to talk. He is going to have to say what happened and why he is waiting so long to face the inevitable blows my mind. And it makes me so mad. It makes me so upset for her family. And shame on him. Shame on his parents because there is obviously something wrong in the works for them to get an attorney and they are hiding it. So you guys look this case up focus on her picture she has very distinctive tattoos on her hands she has some on her arms blonde hair blue eyes um smaller stature like 110 pounds i believe the flyer said like five two but i will also post that right here and y'all she needs our help and that's why i decided to do this video because she can still be out there she can still be out there wandering around. I mean, you guys, I can't stop talking about this because there's so many things that go through my mind of like, if she is out there or like, what if she's so scared to come forward, you know, because of something that happened or because she's scared of Brian and doesn't want him to find her or, um, there's just so many things that go through your mind and I can only imagine as a parent. No, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what they're going through. I can't put myself in their shoes because I'm not there and I'll never understand what they're going through. And, um, my prayers and my positive vibes go out to the Petito family. I hope they get justice. I hope they find their daughter. And I hope that at some point, Somebody gets that boy to talk, man. I just, I hope. And I hope this video reaches you guys and puts her face out there. And maybe you can share with your friends and your family that live in the areas that she's been. So if they've seen anything, because there could have been other altercations we don't know about. There could have been somebody that heard them in that hotel room having an argument if they were together. Um... I mean, there's so many people that they're, they're probably not even thinking about it, but if they saw her picture or maybe heard her voice on the body cam of the police officer, maybe it'll trigger something in them and they can report it. Because again, the FBI is working on this case. I'm going to leave if the hotlines down in the description box, all of the links, um, I'll leave everything I can down in the description box for you guys. Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope she's found. I hope you guys, um, learned something, uh, about the case from this video and you guys, we made, we made coasters. Okay. We made coasters with Dollar Tree coasters, Walmart napkins, Mod Podge. And I will just to show you guys, I do take my coasters outside and I coat them with this triple thick crystal clear gaze. I don't know. It's probably Krylon. Um, and it gives it like that nice shiny finish. You could leave them as is, but I wouldn't trust it with a bunch of moisture dripping on it. So you guys, I appreciate you guys always being here with me. And, um, I appreciate if you guys leave me a thumbs up, subscribe, share if you are into the true crime and crafting. And then I will be back next Saturday. And hopefully I have enough in information to talk about Kylan and Crystal um, so that we can get their faces out there as well because their murder still has not been found. So you guys have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Remember, keep your eyes and your ears open. Any kind of information is some information that can possibly change her life and her family's life. So I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you back here on Tuesday. Bye.